at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Saturday. It's April 6th at 6 a.m. Thank you so much for waking up with us, Sarah. I know you guys have had the busiest week. Yeah, two days away from the eclipse. Yeah, I mean, I think all eyes are on this cloud yeah. potential rain forecast later in that day. Exactly. Yeah. After the eclipse, there are going to be some storms possible. So we have got a lot to talk about. But first, I want to get you through your weekend. We've got okay. a lot of visitors to San Antonio this weekend, not only for the eclipse, but we've also got uh, the Valero Texas open. So a lot of people visiting San Antonio. And as you step outside this morning, you can instantly feel the humidity. Humidity is back in a big way. It's 65 degrees outside. Winds are from the southeast at about about 10 miles per hour. As we look at your weekend forecast, patchy drizzle this morning and a humid Saturday. We're going to be up to 81 degrees for the high temperature. Now tomorrow there is the potential for a brief morning shower, but we'll see a little bit more sun in the afternoon tomorrow, which is why we'll be warmer near 85. Then on Monday it is all about the total solar eclipse uh, as the moon passes in between the sun and the earth. We're going to watch the moon cast Cast a shadow on the earth that'll pass through areas here in San Antonio in the hill country all the way up to New England. But the question is, what will the weather be like? We are going to be seeing some clouds in San Antonio, but there is hope if you're wanting to see some of the eclipse. I'll tell you that information coming up in just a bit. Sarah. Sarah, thank you. This morning, a man is dead after he was shot while he was sitting in his vehicle in the city's northeast side. This happened yesterday afternoon in the parking lot of a nail salon on Perrin Bidal near that's near Thousand Oaks Drive. Police say the shooter fired multiple rounds, then took off in a white sedan. No one else was hurt so far. No arrests have been made. A man accused of killing someone at an apartment complex early three years, nearly three years ago took the stand in his own trial yesterday. So Davidis Anderson is accused of shooting and killing Malcolm Everett during an argument in 2021. Since the start of the trial, the defense has argued that Anderson shot and killed Everett after he was attacked. And that's what Anderson repeated when he took the stand. The case has now gone to the jury. Del deliberations will begin on Tuesday. If found guilty, Anderson faces up to life in prison. And a South Texas mayor has resigned in this drug trafficking investigation. According to the local news station KRGV, Progreso Mayor Gerardo Alanis submitted his letter of resignation after he was released from federal custody Thursday. He faces four charges related to cocaine distribution in his resignation later. Alanis thanked the Progreso community for the opportunity to serve over the past 10 years. In your morning headlines, four women have come forward to say NASA aerospace engineers sexually assaulted them. Now investigators have many more victims. The Harris County District Attorney's Office calls 37-year-old Eric Sim a, quote, sexual predator. He currently faces six counts of sexual assault. Investigators believe his NASA job helped gain credibility with his victims. NASA says it's cooperating with authorities and will take appropriate action based on this investigation. Authorities are asking any other potential victims to come forward. That was what people across the Northeast felt yesterday morning after a rare 4.8 magnitude magnitude earthquake rattled homes and buildings. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, it was the third largest recorded in the area in the last 50 years. The New York Police Department said no injuries or damage have been reported, but the earthquake impacted air travel. The Federal Aviation Administration said flights at the New York, Kennedy, Philadelphia, Baltimore and Newark airports are put on hold while runways were inspected for possible damage. Millions of popular laundry detergent pods have been recalled due to the faulty packaging. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission says the pods pose a serious risk of accidental ingestion by young children and it may cause deadly injuries. The recall involves Tide, Gain Flings, Ace and 
other aerial liquid laundry detergent pod packets, which were made between September of 2023 and February of 2024. They were sold in flexible film bags and US at US retailers like Big Lots, Family Dollar, Target, Walmart, and Amazon. Okay, now to something we've been talking about for weeks and we are very excited about Monday's total solar eclipse. Schools across the San Antonio area, Sarah, will have their eyes on the sky Monday afternoon. I was out to eat last night. I heard like six different tables talking about why they were in town for the eclipse. People are so excited and over at Northside ISD's Burke Elementary, the fifth graders there are already learning about the solar eclipse, of course, and Patty Santos tells us how they're also learning how math and science play into our everyday lives. We are going to be doing our solar eclipse stations today. Fifth grade teacher Julianne Arswaga is excited about the real life science experiment just days away. Try to build some solar eclipse glasses that are going to be a lot sturdier. Students in her STEM class at Burke Elementary School are ready. We've been learning about the eclipse probably for about the last month or so, um, just like little pieces here and there. During our visit, students got a chance to use tools and their problem solving skills to show us what they know. And let's make sure that connect touches the battery. Mm -hmm. <gasps> there you go. Excellent job. What did you learn in this class in the last few weeks that you didn't know about the eclipse? Um, that it can like burn your, like the eye. That it's when the moon blocks the sun and then it makes it look like it's night. Educators are excited about the unique learning opportunity. By making connections with lighting, motion, the sun, moon, and shades, a gifted and talented class teacher, Maria Sandoval, says they can bring science and technology and art to life. A lot of the kids, you know, science isn't something that's very concrete. So doing this for the kiddos, these different learning opportunities, these um, experiences, that they're, it's really putting it into perspective for them. And it's, you know, they're really understanding the importance of what's happening. Here's how to keep the learning going at home. Parents can be asking their kids, you know, what exactly are you doing in STEM class? Um, how does that relate to what's going on? Teachers say make it memorable because it's a science experiment we might never get a chance to be a part of again. It's pretty neat. It's science. Who doesn't love science? Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Of science. Okay, also happening this weekend, the Thunderbirds are in San Antonio for the Great Texas Air Show at Joint Base San Antonio Randolph. So the show is a huge draw for plane enthusiasts. So you're going to see us flying low, we're going to be flying fast, and we're going to be flying together, and it's going to look beautiful. The best part, it's free to go. So the gates open at 9 today and tomorrow the performances start at 11. They were practicing around the San Antonio area yesterday. The Thunderbirds hit the sky at 3 p.m. on both days on Saturday and Sunday. We have all this information on KSAT.com. It's 608 and 64 degrees and as we prepare for Monday's big event, the roads are expected to be busy. What TxDOT is telling drivers, that's after the break. Sarah Spivey, the busiest meteorologist in town, getting us all ready for not just the eclipse, but this weekend. We kind of have lots to talk about when it comes to weather. We're gonna see some showers on Monday, but she's gonna get us through the weekend first. We'll talk about it when we come back. Okay, take caution and be prepared. That's TxDOT's message for those driving for Monday's eclipse. A lot of people are going to be yep. driving for the eclipse. Yep. So our Avery Everett explains what you can do to best get the view that you need to get without potentially getting stuck. Ahead of the eclipse, highways across San Antonio are already filling up. And that means an empty lot for Pilata Auto. We're fully booked right now. That's one thing. So even if they call us, we don't have. All vehicles this weekend have been booked out for weeks at this car rental agency off Vance Jackson. But owner Sahir Maswadi says people are still looking for rentals. Yes, we're expecting a lot of calls. And other agencies across San Antonio are showing similar patterns. Online, many big rental companies here have limited, if any, inventory through Tuesday. Whether you're renting a car or driving your own, Texas officials are urging any driver behind the wheel to have a plan before they head out this weekend. TxDOT wants drivers to use drivetexas.org to plan their trip and see real-time traffic updates, especially for those driving electric vehicles. Because once you get deeper into central Texas, some towns like Vanderpool 
have limited charging options. We've only got one, but at least we got something in case someone gets in a bind. This charger is the only one in the western portion of Bandera County for miles. At least we're prepared for it. That's why TxDOT says being patient and planning ahead is all you can do ahead of this weekend. With days still before the eclipse crosses over Texas, roads are expected to only get worse. And if you are driving an electric vehicle, the U.S. Department of Energy has a map showing charging stations across the U.S. that you can use when planning your trip. We have that link on KSAT.com. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, electric vehicles, definitely something we got to think about. Now, yeah, for sure. OK, so go ahead and scan this QR code on your screen for everything you need to know about the total solar eclipse and you can access it all. Yeah, you'll instantly see videos and articles that will help you navigate here in, in San Antonio and across the hill country. And I also just updated the eclipse forecast article okay. for folks, too. So that'll take you there. And speaking of the forecast, I mean, Sarah, let, let's just get right to it and yeah. talk about what we can expect for eclipse day. You know, a 100 percent clear view of the eclipse is not in the cards mm. for San Antonio. Yeah. But we've known that for a while. Right. We do know it's going to be mostly cloudy. Now, whether the eclipse is partially blocked or totally block, blocked will depend on the types of clouds overhead. Now, if it's partially blocked on the left side of your screen, you can see that the sun will still be visible between the clouds and it'll still get dark. Even if it is totally blocked, worst case scenario, even if you do not see any of the transition to the total solar eclipse, the, it will still get dark if you're in the path of totality and dramatically so faster than any darkness that you've experienced faster than any sunset. So still a cool experience, just not as cool as if you could see some of the transition. And here's the reason why we expect mostly cloudy skies on eclipse day. We've got an upper level low that's going to position itself and send high clouds over Texas. All of Texas is going to get those high, thin, wispy cirrus clouds. This is why it's a guarantee that it's at least going to be partially blocked. What we're going to be watching for is at the surface. Early Monday morning, low clouds will surge in from the southeast, and this is typical spring-like pattern for us. The question is, will these low clouds break up, and how much will they break up between uh, for the totality close to 130? There is hope that we will see breaks in these low clouds clouds, but that's about the best that we can do. Breaks in the low clouds with those high thin cirrus clouds overhead. Do not pay attention to where this particular computer model shows those breaks in clouds because those could be random and in anywhere along that path. So keep that in mind. We will not be seeing a clear view, but we're hoping for breaks in the clouds. So before the eclipse on Monday, we'll have patchy fog and potentially even some patchy drizzle. During the eclipse, the entire eclipse process will happen from about noon to 3, but totality will happen at 1.30 in the afternoon. And it's during that totality that we will have mostly cloudy skies, but we're hoping for breaks in the clouds. This is important. After the total solar eclipse, in the late afternoon and evening, there will be a few storms possible. Some of those storms could even be on the strong or severe side capable of hail. I'm particularly concerned for folks who are camping out uh, outside after the eclipse. Please pay attention to the, the weather will be on it and, and looking at things for you for storms after the eclipse. But a lot of people are going to be traveling. Again, the chance for storms really occurs after the eclipse. That is the key word there. And the storms are not going to be for everyone, only about 30% coverage. We'll also see storms possible on Tuesday and early on Wednesday as well. So after the eclipse, still a busy forecast with storms at a potential. As for this weekend, though, it is mainly just going to be humid weekend outside right now. You can see the clouds have moved back in. It's 65 degrees at the airport, 63 in New Braunfels, 64 in Comfort, and 66 in Hondo. We have have, uh, we did have some areas of patchy fog. Looks like visibility has returned to fairly normal around San Antonio, the metro area, but I wouldn't be surprised if you see some areas of patchy drizzle out there this morning. By noon, it's going to be 72. We'll see peaks of sunshine in the afternoon, a high temperature of 81 degrees in San Antonio today, and breezy. Winds will be from the south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's a look at highs in your neighborhood. Clouds will clear quicker out to the west. 
which is why it's going to be hot near Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Laredo in the 90s. Around San Antonio in the Hill Country, though, temperatures are going to be in the upper 70s, near 80 degrees, 79 in Helotus, 81 in San Antonio, 78 in Seguin, 79 in New Braunfels, 84 in Honda. Let's put it all together for you in the seven day forecast. Patchy drizzle this morning, 81 for the high. Tomorrow, a morning shower is possible. We'll see more sunshine in the afternoon tomorrow, but that sunshine is going to be a bit of a tease because remember, clouds are going to be working their way back into San Antonio for the eclipse. It's going to be mostly cloudy with hopes for breaks in those low clouds and then a few storms after the eclipse. Storms possible on Tuesday and pleasant mornings for the remainder of the week with highs near 80. Of course, the, the air show happening today, Sarah, too. Yeah. I've got a forecast update for that air show coming up in the next half hour. Thank you, Sarah. I know you're really busy. Thank you. <laughs> of course, but this is what we live for because we are your weather authority. We're your eclipse authority. We're going to walk you through the process. Make sure you download that KSAT Weather Authority app. It's free and informational. All right, it's 618 and 64 degrees. We'll be right back. Loyalty, duty, respect, honor, integrity, and personal courage, those are just a few values high school enlistees will gain when deciding to serve their country. And one local nonprofit is working to make sure these graduates know just how many people are in their corner. Having served his country, Rich Stinson understands the dedication and commitment it takes when choosing to enlist. The tremendous decision a young adult makes when they raise their right hand to take an oath of enlistment to serve their country is a selfless act he hopes will always be remembered. He knows the opportunities seniors have following graduation are plentiful. Making sure their selfless act doesn't go unrecognized is a huge reason why Rich became a volunteer and serves as a board member of the nonprofit Our Community Salutes San Antonio. Every year, our community salutes San Antonio, honors and recognizes graduates and their families during their enlistee recognition ceremony. Rich says it's similar to a national signing day. It's an opportunity to really put a spotlight uh, on these young men and women uh, for the decision that they're going to make and for the service you know that they're going to give for all of our benefit. And what we like to say is it's we get the chance to be the first ones to say thank you. The purpose of the enlistment ceremony is to individually honor and recognize each graduate with a stole embroidered with the branch of service they are joining and to surround them with peers who are making the same choice. This unique experience is also an opportunity for family members to network, gain knowledge and resources. It's a way to welcome everyone and offer the support they need for rich, it's a shot of patriotic adrenaline to see the pride and the joy of the faces of the graduates and their families, saying thank you to the young volunteer service members who will be stepping into a cause that is greater than themselves, is a reminder of what's good in our community, our city, and our country. To give back, give back not only to their local community, but to their country. Uh, and, and when they come back, whether their military service ends in four or six years or in 23 or 24 years, they bring so much back to their local community and it all starts here. 13th Annual Recognition Ceremony is a free event on May 14th. Registration is required for the enlistees and their families. You can find more information in the KSAT Community section of KSAT.com. It is 624 and 64 degrees. We'll be right back. Okay, check this insanely expensive comic book out. Oh. It's Action Comics number one, the issue that introduced Superman in 1938. It sold at Heritage Auctions, get this, for $6 million this sale breaks its own world oh record. Oh my goodness. Now, a copy of the same comic sold privately in 2022 for $5.3 million, and the previous auction record was Amazing Fan Fantasy number 15, which featured the debut of Spider-Man. That sold for $3.6 million in 2021. Man, 
You just have the money. Right. All right, Disney Plus will start to curb password sharing in June in some countries. Sorry, Mom and Dad, they use my account. And more <laughs> broadly, in September, it's part of Disney's efforts to boost signups and revenue as the streaming service continues to lose money. So CEO Bob Iger came out and said that pointed it to the jump in signups in its rival Netflix has seen since its recent crackdown on password sharing. Yeah, so Iger called Netflix the, quote, gold standard in streaming, end quote, and said he hopes a similar boost could help move the company's streaming platform toward profitability. Sarah, mm -hmm. a lot of people, uh, streaming services, are kind of figuring out, okay, well, we can't just uh, offer this to everybody yeah. without losing money. So, I don't know. I feel like things are going to go back to, like, the bundles that we had for cable and things like that. I mean, we've already started to see it. We're still here, guys. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't know. I just, I mean, I, so many people in my family use my Disney account. But, I mean, we did this. We went through it when we did Netflix, and now I have to pay for Netflix. But... We'll all get there. We will. <laughs> 629 and 65 degrees. Still ahead, what a local group of teenagers is doing to help the homeless and how it involves HEB plastic bags. Good morning. It's 6.30 a.m. April 6th. Sarah, um, there's so much to talk about when it yeah. comes to uh, the, the weather and the forecast with the eclipse, but... We also have the Great Texas Air Show happening, and I know a lot of people are excited to see the Thunderbirds today. Of course, in Military City, USA, super excited. And if you're planning on going out there today to JBSA Randolph, know that uh, the gates open at 9, show starts at 11. This morning, it's cloudy. There are areas of patchy drizzle, and it's in the mid-60s. By around lunch hour, it'll still be fairly cloudy, and it'll be humid, 74. In the afternoon, some peaks of sun, but still plenty of clouds and breezy with a high of 81. Of course, everybody talking about the fact that Monday brings a total solar eclipse to the San Antonio metro area and parts of the hill country. Again, remember that only the north side of San Antonio and the west side of San Antonio are in that path of totality. The red here areas near downtown are not in totality, but areas toward Bernie and Bandera. This is a look at the time of totality close to 132, 133 in the afternoon and totality will last depending on where you're at. If you're near Castle Hills, only a minute. If you're up near Bernie, though, three minutes and 30 seconds. Bandera, four minutes. Now, in the forecast, we do have clouds in the forecast. We're not going to get a crystal clear view of the eclipse. That is guaranteed. There will be at least some clouds during the eclipse, but it's not all bad news because even if you do have clouds in totality, it will still get dark and viewing is still possible if we get some breaks in the low clouds, I'll give you that eclipse forecast and, of course, tell you what you can expect for the rest of your weekend coming up. Sarah. Sarah, thank you. A 19-year-old is dead this morning after he was shot on the city's east side. San Antonio police say this happened just before midnight on East Houston Street near New Braunfels Avenue in front of a Dollar Tree store. There was some kind of altercation, police say, and someone shot the 19-year-old in the chest. He was pronounced dead on the scene. Police have several people detained for questioning, but so far no arrests have been made. Of course, this is an ongoing investigation. We will bring you the updates when we have them. It's been nearly six months since 15-year-old Joshua Via Jr.'s life was cut short in a hit and run on the city's west side. So at the time of the incident, he was walking here in the area of Highway 90 near Pin Road on the city's northwest side. According to San Antonio police, on October 30th, an unknown vehicle failed to drive within a single lane and hit via. That driver never stopped. He died on scene. Now his mother still has lots of questions. I just felt my son was thrown when, the way he got hit. Nobody deserves to be left just like that in the ground. I wish I could like just bring him back, you know, bring him home. His mother is now ask, asking for anyone who might know something to come forward. Police have no suspect or description on the type of vehicle that was involved. In your morning medical news, obesity and diabetes, both problems here in San Antonio. That's why UT Health San Antonio is inviting you to an event focused on just that. So in 2024, the Bi-National 
Obesity and, and Metabolic Symposium is next Thursday. It's free. Doctors want you to go talk to them and learn about how to prevent and treat obesity and metabolic diseases. Diabetes is one out of two adults. Diabetes is one out of five here in San Antonio. So all those people could come and receive valuable information and understand what are we doing at UT Health Science Center uh, to promote collaborations with other countries and be able to uh, learn more about these diseases and hopefully find a cure. People will also get free lunch. So again, the 2024 Binational Obesity and Metabolic Symposium is next Thursday, April 11th at 7703 Floyd Curl Drive. The event goes from eight to one. You have to register before you go, so we have that information on how you can register. Just go to ksat.com. An act of kindness shaped by a simple grocery bag. So a group of teenagers have a new purpose for those plastic bags that so many of us bring home from the store. John Paul Barajas shows us how their efforts are helping those experiencing homelessness. <laughs> Roughly 40 to 50,000 plastic grocery bags have made a huge difference thanks to Teens Give Back, SATX. High school students are using them to make sleeping mats for San Antonio's unsheltered residents. Take for granted having a bed to go home at night after a long day of work or a long day of school and the comfortness that that brings us. That's why Addie Roberts wanted to take matters or plastic bags into her own hands to make this. When we hand those over to the clients that we work with, uh, again, it's, it's invaluable. I mean, it provides warmth. It provides, you know, ability to stay dry, um, to stay away from bugs. Um, so, you know, all of that matters to somebody who's sleeping unsheltered outside. Rex Bryan with Sam Ministry says in some temperatures, these mats could save lives by keeping people off the ground. But making one take 700 to 900 bags in about 15 to 20 hours. You're going to poke your thumb through. So your thumb will end up being inside of the bag. Roberts gave me a crash course on how it's done. You have it kind of like a T. And then you're going to get that same bag and put it through the handles. And then you're going to pull it. Then you get to weaving. Pull this part through. Mm -hmm. All the way? Or just Not all the way. Up. And I then keep you keep another through. loop. Yep. And then you just keep pulling through. To get to this. All right. Now it's second nature for Roberts and her teammates, but it did take some practice. I, I didn't really see it at first. And uh, I didn't see it for the first all the steps until it was made. <laughs> But once it was made, I thought it was really cool and it was. Over the past year, the group says they made 50 mats thanks to neighborhood bag drives. But a recent partnership with HEP gave them 8,000 bags, allowing them to create 10 mats in just one month. It's just a really nice feeling. Like, even if you're really tired, it's like, okay, well, I did something good. Now they hope to keep the momentum going by bringing in new volunteers. Don't tell the boss I'm going to be taking a nap at work. John Paul Barajas. I, I can see why you have actually tested out your work before. <laughs> A plus. This is good. <laughs> 12 News. Thank you, JP. It's 640 and 65 degrees. Businesses and officials in the Hill Country prepping for the thousands of visitors expected this weekend. And Monday for that total solar eclipse. After the break, what some of those preparations look like. So Sarah Spivey not only has your eclipse forecast coming up, also, she says there might be a few showers, light, misty, patchy showers this morning, and maybe some rain after the eclipse on Monday. She's going to explain all of that when we come back. We are counting down the days until the total solar eclipse. We are two days away, and even if you're not excited about it, the major event can still impact you. And that's why Hill Country leaders and businesses, they're prepping for the thousands of visitors expected during Monday's total eclipse. So the good news, they'll boost the economy. Right. The bad news, they'll also bring traffic and a potential strain on first responders, food and fuel surprise. So meteorologist Supplies. Mia. <laughs> Supplies. We don't want any fuel surprises. No. <laughs> so meteorologist Mia Montgomery explains being ready is a team effort. They've been having these conversations pretty much, they started them even after the 2017 because it was announced we would be in totality for the next one. Cities like Kerrville and Bernie have been preparing for April's total eclipse for years. Various departments and organizations have worked together to plan for the distribution of resources and extreme traffic. Traffic is definitely the biggest thing. TxDOT 
DPS, FBI, local state county officials all across the board. We've been meeting with everybody just to make sure we're all on the same page. October's annular eclipse was a test run, giving officials a chance to make adjustments for April. Kerr and Kendall County signed disaster declarations to activate their emergency management plans while preparing for traffic. And the temporary population increase means food and fuel are also going to be in demand. So our retailers are preparing for this. They know that there are going to be more people. So they too are planning for that increase so that way they can um, adjust accordingly. And while those conditions will be monitored closely, leaders say there are a few things you can do before venturing out. Printing out maps that you might need or anything that you might resource digitally. You have it printed out before you get here. Um, carry some extra cash and bringing supplies with you. If you plan to hit the roads near the time of the eclipse, here are a few safety tips from TxDOT. Expect heavy traffic and sudden stops by drivers. Be on alert for distracted pedestrians looking to the sky. Keep your headlights on while driving, even in the daylight. Do not wear your eclipse glasses while driving. And always keep your eyes on the road. Just kind of prepare beforehand. Uh, and with that in mind, I think we're all going to experience this once-in-a-lifetime event uh, successfully and wonderfully. Mia Montgomery, KSAT 12 News. Sarah, all eyes on the sky. And at yeah. this point, you're saying there's in our viewing area, there's really just not a chance for complete 100 percent clear skies. Correct. There will be clouds okay. on eclipse day, but it's not a total wash because it depends on the clouds overhead. And we're going to talk in depth about that forecast. But first, I want to get you through your weekend. As we take a look at today's forecast, some patchy morning drizzle out there right now, and it's going to be humid. A few peaks of sun in 81. Tomorrow, a morning shower is possible, but we'll see clearer skies quicker and so a high near 85. As you take a look at the humidity, dew points have gone up some 15 to 20 degrees, which means we've seen a surge in humidity just within the last 24 hours. You can feel it outside. You can see it outside in the form of some areas of patchy fog and drizzle. We'll have patchy fog and drizzle with us through the morning. Then about noon, it's going to be mostly cloudy in 72. In the afternoon, we'll be looking at a high of 81. So a warm day, a muggy day and breezy too with winds from the south. It'll be 79 in Holotus, 78 in Bernie, 79 in Kerrville, 82 in Bandera, 84 in Utopia, 88 in Uvalde. Notice warmer out to the west where skies will clear quicker, 78 in Seguin and 79 in Canyon Lake. Let's take a look at our national weather. So we got a big low pressure system bringing some uh, snow to parts of Colorado and Wyoming. This is also winding up our atmosphere and allowing for some fire danger across parts of Texas, Kansas and the Dakotas as well as Nebraska. And when we look at temperatures, you can really clearly see that Texas is the warm spot on the map. We've got that surge of moisture returning. That's why temperatures are in the 60s, even though it feels like winter elsewhere across our nation. Further off into the Pacific is another low pressure system, and this is what is going to bring us clouds on eclipse day. Here are your potential options when it comes to uh, the eclipse day, Monday, April 8th. The sky will either be partially blocked where the sun will be visible between between some clouds. Now it'll still get dark at totality around 1:30, or the sky will be totally blocked with low level clouds. And in this case, of course, the sun and the moon are not going to be visible. But again, it is still going to get dark at totality and darkness will fall quicker than any darkness you've experienced. So still a cool event, just not ideal. Ideally, we would have those clear skies. That's not going to be the case. We're definitely going to have high clouds, not only for our viewing area, but even up toward Dallas and uh, parts of Arkansas as well. So those high, thin, wispy cirrus clouds where you may be able to see the eclipse through it. What we'll be watching are those low clouds. We're hoping for breaks in the low clouds as we head closer to the time of totality. We often see low clouds this time of year and they start to clear right around noon, one o'clock, and that is the time of totality right around 1:30. So hoping for breaks in the low clouds to be able to see the sun through those thin cirrus clouds. We we will keep you posted. As for across the nation, honestly, the best view across the nation is likely going to be through places like Indiana, Ohio, and then also up in New England. This is a bit ironic because statistically, these areas are a lot cloudier than Texas is this time of year. But that's where they'll probably have the best view of the eclipse across the nation. Back here in San Antonio, again, the key things to remember for the eclipse day 
before the eclipse. We'll have some patchy morning fog and drizzle during the eclipse. It's going to be mostly cloudy and we're hoping for breaks in the low clouds. After the eclipse, a few storms are going to be possible. It is spring storm season in Texas, so if a few storms can get going, chances about 30% after the eclipse, they could become stronger severe with hail possible. We will keep you posted. Again, the key there is after the eclipse, those storms are possible on Monday. Storms are possible on Tuesday and early on Wednesday as well. Just a friendly reminder, if you're in town, maybe you know, have friends that are camping out, be very aware Monday afternoon and evening for the potential for storms. If you're traveling, be aware too. We'll keep you posted. KSAT Weather Authority app. Find a way to find shelter if you happen upon a storm. We will keep you posted. I know a lot of people in town. Welcome. Welcome. I was everybody. out in the Pearl last night. Booming. Booming. I was like, it's 6 p.m. I thought I came early to dinner. But I know we have a lot of visitors in town, so welcome and enjoy our San Antonio area. It's 650 and 65 degrees. Let's take a look outside with Trans Guide, see what's happening on the roads there. I did see an incident, if we could switch it to, I believe it was 410 in Marbach earlier. There it is. I think we just have a stalled vehicle um, right there at the exit at Marbach. If anything does pop up, we'll let you know about it. Well, happening today, elementary and middle school students from 23 Northside ISD campuses will compete in a really big way. They are hoping to be crowned the district's first Lego League Masterpiece Challenge Grand Champion. This is so cool. The public is invited to come watch 230 students showcase their robotic skills at Bernal Middle School competition. It's happening in the gym. The doors open at 845 in the morning with robotic Competition rounds happening until 1:10 this afternoon. So each team will have a 30-minute session with volunteer judges that their score judges will score the robot design. Then the closing ceremony is scheduled to start at 1:45. We're going to be sending our photojournalist out there to check it out. And this event will also be live streamed on KSAT Plus. 655 and 65 degrees. We'll be right back with Sarah's final forecast. of a total solar eclipse will pass through Texas Monday, April 8th. But here's the thing, only half of San Antonio will be in the path of totality, and you definitely want to be in the path of totality. Right now on KSAT.com, we made this really cool interactive map so that you can see if you're in the path of totality and how long totality will last. Just zoom in to a location you're interested in, or you can type in a specific address using the magnifying glass. I've also made county by county lists showing when totality will start and how long totality will last for many locations. There's even fun eclipse views, which show what the eclipse will look like all across South Central Texas, depending on the time and location. So make sure to check it out. KSAT 12 is your eclipse authority station. Now the only thing to do is hope for clear skies. Which we won't get. Yeah. We won't get clear skies. <laughs> no. so yeah, we're either going to have a partially blocked eclipse where you'll be able to see parts of the sun through some of those high thin cirrus clouds or womp, 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 a totally blocked view where you won't see the sun and moon at all. Here's the thing, though. Regardless, it will still get dark during totality. Yeah. So keep that in mind. That map of totality does show you where you, where totality will happen and how long totality will last. Now, after the eclipse, a storm or two is possible, including on Tuesday and early on Wednesday. But this weekend is just mainly going to be humid today with patchy drizzle, a high of 81. Tomorrow, a morning shower, less humid in the afternoon and a high of 85. Thank you, Sarah. Hey, don't go anywhere because we're going to come back at 8 a.m. Good Morning America starts now.